Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Like promised, uh, you know, amidst India's transition and India's commitment to going ahead and reducing its carbon footprint, we are looking at and talking to Mohit Bhargava, the CEO of NTPC Green Energy, to discuss, you know, what is the role that NTPC will be playing in order to go ahead and ensure India's smooth transition towards a net zero future. First up, sir, thank you so much for joining us here. So what is NTPC Renewables commissioning targets when you're comparing it to India's COP26 commitments? And what is the path that you have set in order to go ahead and achieve the target of 60 gigawatt renewable energy capacity base by FY32? Uh, good afternoon and, and thanks, Vivek. Uh, it's good to be on the show and thanks for having me here. Uh, yes, you're right. As part of India's overall energy transition and the commitments at the COP, uh, NTPC plans to have at least 60 gigawatts of capacity. And this is out of the larger basket of around uh, 400 odd gigawatts of renewable capacity, which the country will have out of the 500 gigawatts of uh, non-fossil capacity. So we are on track to do that. And we are quite hopeful that we should be able to do that. Uh, in terms of what we are looking at today, uh, well, other than the capacity, which is already commissioned, as, you, as you're showing on the screen as well, about three and a half gigawatts, we, have, we are working on a pipeline of close to another 25, 26 gigawatts, which has about 8 gigawatts, which is under construction. Uh, we have another uh, 10 gigawatts, which is under tendering, and another 10, gigawatts, 10 to 12 gigawatts, which is going to be tendered out soon. So we are quite on track uh, uh, to meet the overall targets. Uh, not only we don't look at it only as energy transition, we also look at it in terms of how we can actually change the, help the country change the landscape and move away from a primarily fossil fuel-based uh, system to a more uh, non-conventional uh, non system, whereby we are able to provide renewable energy or renewable energy-based solutions, not only to the discounts, but also to the industries. So that's how we are looking at it in an overall context. Okay, Mr. Bhagav, uh, uh, welcome to the show. You know, you spoke about uh, the capacity addition plans that NTPC Green Energy has going forward, and a lot of it is in the solar segment as well. Considering the global backdrop right now, we are seeing, uh, you know, PV module prices coming down, the component prices coming down. Is it good for the Indian solar industry? Or do you think that is something that could have an impact on module manufacturers and then the end uh, producer as well? How do you look at that landscape? I would say this is kind of a googly in terms of a question. Uh, <laughs> But if you're looking at an overall context, uh, uh, we believe very clearly that uh, supplying renewable energy is, of course, the primary target. And we should also aim to do at the lowest cost possible. So if there are options available today in getting the modules at the lowest cost available, and we should try and leverage that to the maximum. Uh, it doesn't mean, of course, that we should not support the domestic industry, and that is what the government has been doing. But we should also maximize the use of the low-cost uh, module availability across the globe totally. So we are in the process. We've already imported close to about uh, 1.5 gigawatts of uh, solar modules. And we are in the process of uh, importing some more. So we need to take advantage of the low prices globally. That's our point of view. So is there a timeline that you're working with, given the fact that you know ALMM kicks uh, you know, from April 2024? So between now and then, would you be looking at tying up some more solar module capacity? Yeah, whatever capacity we can get in terms of whatever the guidelines by the government of India, we'll try to do that. Okay, all right. So that's about capacity and the solar space. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about at a time when stock markets are live. So they want to know about the IPO. Are there any plans? Because reports have suggested there could be an IPO for the green arm of NTPC by FY25 or 2025. Is there a plan? Do you think that's the right move? Yeah, we are certainly looking at that. And uh, we are in the process of appointing the merchant bankers. We already... Uh, took out the RFS, and we are in the process of finalizing that. Uh, you see, timeline is always something which has to be decided at the end of the day. Uh, as we see, it's generally an eight to nine month cycle from where we are today, at least, uh, to if we are able to finally hit the market. But that will depend on a lot of conditions at that point of time. So we are working on that, and the aim is to uh, raise, uh, go to the market with an IPO uh, sometime. Is it? Is it yeah. Yeah, sometime, sometime in, the next, in the next fiscal, yeah. 
So, so FY25, uh, you know, markets would be anticipating some announcement from you in terms of the NTPC Green Energy IPO. Uh, so, one question, you know, off the top of your head, uh, what do you think are the benefits of an IPO? Because globally, you know, as uh, you know, Bernstein report recently pointed out, actually, you know, a lot of companies that have gone up with renewable energy IPOs have actually at certain times, you know, gone ahead and remerged back with the parent entity. Of course, in India, you know, the situation is a lot different. Uh, but what do you see are the benefits of listing this particular arm separately, whether uh, and, you know, versus keeping it within the NTPC fold itself? Look, there are two or three issues which are at hand. When you talk about 60 gigawatt, as we did earlier, so our requirement of equity is significantly high. So we will definitely have to raise equity uh, either through internal accruals or from the market. So we feel that we'll have to go to the market at some point of time. And the kind of rate at which we are going in with the CAPEX and the, all those plans, we'll need to raise equity at some point of time. So that is number one. Two, we also feel that probably it's a good time to, uh, you know, benchmark ourselves. Uh, you mentioned Bernstein, but on the, equally on the other side, there are quite a few reports which say that we need to go to the market as early as possible. So it's always, uh, I, I think, a difference of opinion between the analysts, and we respect all of them. Uh, but if everything falls into place, if the situation is conducive, we see that we should be hitting the market. Okay. Uh, can you give us a sense of the capex that you've planned? So much capacity addition that's come by. Uh, if we, there is an IPO, you are looking at raising money that could be uh, put back in the company as well. What's that amount? Uh, we are not looking at in terms of a, uh, amount. Uh, this year's capex was about ten thousand uh, crores on the green side. I'm not talking about the entire NTPC capex. Uh, next year also we are looking at close to fifteen to twenty uh, crores, uh, twenty thousand crores of capex and. Uh, so we will, I mean, roughly about 20-25% of that is the equity we put in. So that's the kind of money we're looking. So one final question. So can you highlight and, you know, spell out for us, uh, you know, very quickly, you know, the kind of ambitions that you have in the green ammonia, green hydrogen business? What kind of timelines are you working with there? And what kind of capacity are you looking at? So out of the 60 gigawatts, what we had initially earmarked was that we'll have at least 5 gigawatts of green hydrogen production capacity. Uh, uh, but you might have recently read in the newspapers that we also started work on Puri Matka. That's a big piece of land we have near uh, Vishakhapatnam in the state of Andhra Pradesh. So the idea is to uh, create a green hydrogen hub there, and we hope to start work quickly. Uh, it could be looking at about uh, 2 million tons of ammonia totally, uh, uh, out of which part of that will be done by NTPC Green, and we could actually offer it to some other people who want to do that. We are also looking at about 300 tons per day of green methanol because we feel that uh, that's a that's quite a big piece which will help not only NTPC Green but will also help NTPC in terms okay. of carbon capture. So both of these oh. things go together. Okay, all right, Mr. Bhargav, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us the plans going forward with CapEx expansion and most importantly, the listing as well. That's the word coming in from NTPC Green Energy. We'll sip into a short break. Up